you can look after yourself. Thank you for coming, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to get started because we've got an exciting program. Uh, we're going to take you with the time. Uh, but it's all going to be worth it. My name is Mark Palmer, I'm the one that wrote this book, The, the Rough Guide to Evolution. I'm just going to say something from a, a minute or less than a minute. You're going to hear from me later in the term. We've got a whole term's worth of events lined up. Still a bit fluid, we're organising it as we go along. But I'll be giving you a talk later in the term about Darwin, the Rough Guide to Darwin. So you'll find out that Darwin was not the Messiah, he was certainly a very naughty boy. You'll learn more about that. Just need to say that if you stay to the end, there is an incentive to stay to the end. And that is we have a mystery guest uh, who has a direct link to the time of Darwin. Um, and it will be worth staying for that. So that will be just after five o'clock. There will be someone very important coming in here. Uh, and it's worth staying for that. Now... This is, a, for me, like a dream ticket, you know, like the fantasy football. I've got two of the people I admire the most. I've admired them before. I've never met them in real life until today. But it's really exciting. We've got these two people speaking about evolution from different directions, uh, different angles. But both are going to be very, very exciting. We're going to kick off now with Ken Miller from Brown University. Uh, Ken is a professor of biology there. He's written a, a best-selling textbook. Uh, he has also been uh, a staunch advocate of evolution uh, and a defender of evolution in the American system. Uh, you may have heard there's a lot of problems in, in the U.S. in terms of evolution and uh, its place in, in the uh, education system. Notably, he was uh, a key witness in the uh, Dover, Pennsylvania trial, uh, Kitzmiller uh, versus Dover, which happened a few years ago which was a big landmark case in the history of um, legislation about evolution and the defense of teaching of evolution in the state system there. Uh, Ken is also a practicing Catholic, uh, to which the rejoinder is he hasn't quite got it perfect yet, um, and that, that is part of his, the, the, the kind of whole belief system that he has, that you can believe in evolution and defend it, but you can still be a practicing Christian. So I will now shut up and let Ken talk. And then I will introduce the second speaker uh, after Ken's speech. Now we have to do a dance. You, you're invited to live tweet this. It will be covered on Twitter under the hashtag of Grab2011. Videos of the talk, or well, slide cast of the talk, will be available on YouTube probably tomorrow. Uh, so for all your friends who aren't here, that, that you can get it that way. Good. Mark, thanks very much. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here. I always enjoy uh, coming to the UK and especially to get a chance to meet my friend Mark and he is my friend that's the first time we've seen each other face to face. Uh, one never knows how one is going to be introduced so I always like to bring my own introductory slide along. Uh, I'm a cell biologist. I work on biological membrane structure. This is a little more sympathetic although furry uh, but even so <laughs> you'll notice that this is not the kind of guy you imagine making witty conversation over tea. I mean, this is really, this is the Neanderthals, they're looking to their fate, they know the end is near, or at best, they're the butt of a joke. You know, are you a Neanderthal? Get fast relief with Evo lotion. So, Neanderthals have a real public relations problem. I have often seen myself, I'm an anthropologist, I've studied their bones, I'm tremendously sympathetic to them. I mean, when I'm with the ancient bones of people who lived 40,000, 50,000 years ago, I'm thinking about their lives. I'm trying to interpret what they were like from what their remains are. I'm trying to bring the dead to life in some way. And I use science to do that. I'm going to try to share with you many of the ways that you're able to do that with Neanderthals to give you sort of a flavor of where science is going. And then I'm going to talk about some of our own work trying to uncover their genetics. Darwin, I like to talk about, but I wanted to bring him in in this context in particular, knew a Neanderthal. 